the show, Will Ferrell. Hello, sir. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. How are things? Mm. Thank you. That warm ovation. It's much warmer than being in a curling rink across Canada. <laughs> it is, but the kilt, wearing a kilt is much warmer than you'd think it would be. Yeah. Yeah. It really depends on how true to the form you are. Are you covered under or not? That's key. I uh, was wearing boxers. <laughs> That's all right. Because I thought it'd be chilly, but uh, the Scots knew what they were doing. That material really yeah. traps the, the heat in there, and then I went from being cold to actually sweating. Right. In that region of my body. Right. Do you always in your head imagine there would be another Ron Burgundy movie, Anchorman movie? Uh, never. Yeah, we, um, we, uh, we, when I say myself and Adam McKay, uh, who I've done, Anchorman, Talladega Nights. Funny or Die, right? Funny or Die, Step Brothers, and the other guys with. Uh, we, we never really envisioned ever doing sequels of our movies, just because we had original stories to tell. Um, so, but Anchorman wouldn't go away. They just kind of sat on the shelf and got more and more popular over the years. And, and we finally, finally were like, maybe we should make a sequel. And, and what would be more fun than bringing Ron Burgundy back? And also bringing Ron Burgundy back in a way where you can make kind of a nice social statement and a political statement, the yeah. dawn of 24-hour news, right? Yeah, we, uh, the movie's set in 1980, which uh, we forget that's the, that's the first year for CNN and for... ESPN and all these 24-hour channels started kind of beginning that year, and it's kind of a perfect place to put, to put Ron and the news team trying to figure out what to do, and, and, and we kind of get to, we kind of get to uh, comment on, on how the news is today at the same time. I think what a lot of people who watch at home go through, anybody, when you feel like you're out of step with your own time, which mm -hmm. I think is a real challenge for a lot of people, certainly men, who were the cock of the walk for a while, and they look around and go, Oh, the world's getting away from yeah, me here. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and the beauty of Ron Burgundy is he, he really doesn't evolve ever, so. <laughs> As is evidence when he realizes. He still hasn't grown emotionally. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, but he, he's, he's well-intentioned, yeah. but he just, he doesn't realize that, that, you know, people evolve and things change. Yeah. There's a scene, and you'll see when you watch the movie, when he meets his new boss. Yeah. Yeah, uh, who's an African American woman, and right. the reaction is, is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't know how to process that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if if, if and the, then he tries to apologize for re his reaction, right. it makes it worse. And yeah, but just by constantly referring to them as African and American, African and American. <laughs> yes. If if the original and even debates her in whether or not. Yeah, it she's really, like African American. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it Isn't is. It, could it be like fish and chips? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, for you and Adam, is it just sitting there looking at the, at the possible storyline and going, how far can it be pushed? Uh, well, we, we like to kind of have somewhat of a simple storyline that we know we're gonna follow. And then, um, you know, we'll just think of random ideas and figure out a way to wedge them into the story, regardless of if it makes sense or not. Uh, <laughs> so in this film, uh, we, one idea, just apropos of, of nothing, was Ron should nurse a shark back to health. And uh, <laughs> we're like, okay, where, where is that gonna fit in? It doesn't matter, we'll, we'll figure out a way. And it's in the movie. Yeah. So in you, can, two, you can look forward to that, okay? In two yeah. important scenes in, in, in two, the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it actually is a, we figured out a way, it's, it's a way that he uh, reconnects with his son in a way, so. <laughs> It's very hard to talk about in a serious way. <laughs> You've done a great job. Do you yeah, find but, parts, because I know between this and Funny or Die has been a great platform for yeah. social commentary. You've done stuff in the political realm before. H how do you know in your heart when it's the time to do something where it's not just about a laugh, that there's a message behind it or, or, or a point behind it? I think it just kind of strikes you in the moment. Uh, you know, I, I, I think there, you know, I, I obviously just love being funny for funny's sake, but there, there are other moments where you, you see an opportunity to kind of uh, be satirical and subversive and, uh, and still make people laugh, but, but I, I, don't, you know, I don't know if there's an exact formula. You just, a certain event may happen and, and a certain attitude may be out there that you wanna kinda circle and, 
and put a put a spotlight on, and, and those are the times to do it. Did, in, in your home, did you when you were growing up, was that ever part of the conversation? Were you, did you watch your folks talk about news or families talk about world events? Not really, because uh, my parents didn't talk to me. Um, <laughs> they refused to until I started making money. <laughs> and uh, no, I, I, you know, I, I can't say that I grew up in a, a, a political household or anything like that. I, I was, for some reason, as a kid, drawn to watching the nightly news. Mm -hmm. And I loved, I don't know, I found a sense of comfort in in watching Walter Cronkite deliver the news for some reason. It's the idea that we're all in it together. Yeah, I guess so. You yeah. can learn that stuff. Yeah. Where'd you find that? Huh? How about that? Holy Toledo. <laughs> I am going to have this amazing reaction and not share it with the audience at all <laughs> as to why I'm reacting this way. Uh, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy, right? This is, uh, I don't know what camera I should show this to. We'll find it. This is my father. This yeah. is a country western album my dad did, Lee Farrell, Hard Times. I knew your dad Amazing graphics, way ahead of its time. But look at this, a letter, there's a letter in there, uh, dude. Boy, that's oh, totally, look, look at that letter, man, promoting it. I knew your dad had played with the Righteous Brothers, wow, but I didn't how know. How did you track this down? We got a team, man, it's a good one. You got a good team. Want to see, watch this video, watch this okay, clip. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that, it's uh, Muscle Beach Party. Yeah, Muscle Beach Party, that's right. And my dad's playing saxophone. With Stevie Wonder. With Stevie Wonder and, uh, and Dick Dale. Yeah. And, uh, One of my first interviews. That, that's amazing, yeah. My dad, uh, for those of you in the audience, uh, my father is, is a lifelong musician and he got, he finally got his break. He got discovered in the nightclub he was playing in and this guy said, let's, I wanna, I wanna have you record a country western album. And he, Flew him to Nashville, uh, did, uh, and, turns, and it was a brand new label, but then it turns out that the label was all like a, a tax shelter or something, and they got busted, and the record never got distributed, so. And there it is, there's only anyway. a few copies around. It really was hard times. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave you good advice when he got into he this business, amazing. right? Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, I sat down when I decided that I was gonna, you know, go for it and, and try to jump into comedy. I sat down with my father and I said, do you have any advice? And, and he said, uh, you know, if it was strictly about talent, I wouldn't worry about you, but just remember that there's a lot of luck involved and, uh, and that give it a shot, and if you don't get to the point where you want to, to be at, if you aren't satisfied, it's okay to, it's actually okay to walk away. And, and for some reason that took the pressure off of ever trying to succeed, and I, I thought, well, this is such a crapshoot, I might as well have fun. And, <laughs> And here we are now. Yeah. Who do you guys think you are? We're the real Beastie Boys, mother <laughs> The ones from the future where the <laughs> is really real. Yeah, guess what? That makes zero sense. <laughs> we're the real Beastie Boys. No, we're the real Beastie Boys. <laughs> if Saturday Night Live weren't enough, right? Like, I know New York is famous for lots of things, and SNL is an institution, but the Beastie Boys, that's an institution yeah. in New York. Yeah, when, when you get the call from the Beastie Boys <clears throat> to be in their video, uh, which ended up being their, their last one, in a way, um, uh, that was a, a magical day, and... Uh, um, and to have all of them there, and, and yeah, we kind of couldn't believe it. How is it, what's it like when you, I mean, is it the SNL experience of working with all those people? Because I don't want to give away the scene, but in, at the end of Anchorman 2, I don't know if in the history of Hollywood, <laughs> there have been more stars in one scene. Yeah, we, it, it's jam-packed, and uh, you know, it just, I think it kind of reflects the, <laughs> the love for, for that move, for, for the original Anchorman, and we, we, we got, you know, just about everyone we called uh, on our wish list to come and right. be in that scene said yes. One of them is a legendary rapper, I don't wanna say who it is, very famous, but you were in, used in a Kanye song before with the Beastie Boys, there's a lot of hip hop in your life. 
Is yeah, that, that... I mean, I'm pretty hip-hop. You know? You have to be, When man. you look at me, you think, he's badass. Yeah, yeah. But are you more West Coast or East Coast? But, uh, I'm Midwest Coast. <laughs> um, no, that, I mean, I, I, that's high praise, I think. I mean, it's, it's I, I've, for some reason, uh, lines from the movies we've done have been, you know, uh, and characters have been referenced by, by the hip-hop community yeah. through so many songs, and uh, I don't know why necessarily, but it's fantastic. Is being in that Kanye Jay-Z song the only time you've been referenced in something that you can't comfortably publicly say the title of the song? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in, in that uh, N-Words with in, Paris. In words, you know, N-Words from Paris. <laughs> and it makes you sound even whiter when you say it that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So I know about your father, and we know about you and your story, and your brother's made appearances in your stuff, but uh, tell me about your mother. You I don't hear much I'd about I'd rather her. not. Yeah? Um, no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me you know, something. No, my mom, you know, my, my mother it was, you know, uh, a, a huge figure in my life, a single mom who kind of really uh, instilled values in us in terms of uh, in terms of work ethic and uh, uh, you know she was she's a she's a big hero of mine. You know she put herself through grad school while we were um, you know uh, and working odd, the oddest jobs to pay for it. You know she was she was a she was a job, she had a job called, a, she was a plant lady, where she'd go to offices and take care of plants. And just the most bizarre stuff. <laughs> but probably with the dignity, that's, that's... With dignity, yeah. exactly. And, uh, um, and, she, uh, and she always kind of uh, supported what I was doing, not, not in a big rah-rah way, but like, okay, if you're gonna do this, uh, yeah, because I, you know, I graduated from college and I kind of realized, okay, I wanna try, the comedy thing, she allowed me to move back home and, and you know, I won't make you work, uh, uh, but we'll treat this as your graduate school. And as long as you're moving forward with, you know, either acting class or trying to do stand-up and that sort of thing. And it really gave me kind of a, uh, a safety net to, to go and be adventurous. So I suppose you have to be that kind of family man too. Are you the pay it forward kind of guy with your family? Um, I, for sure. I mean, I'll, I'll be supportive of whatever my my kids want to do. Um, they're still pretty little, so I don't know what's going to happen, but it'll be interesting to see. I think we should call security. Good idea. I like to whisper, too. <laughs> it's okay, Walter's my father. Well, your dad's yeah. busy right now. Okay, I'll come back later. Yeah, you know, you're not going to come back for a while, okay? You're going to go back to Santa Land. Okay. Yeah, why don't you go back to Gimbal's? That's, uh... That was my that was my brother Pat on right. the right there. Yeah, it's ten years this Christmas of Elf, oh, the tenth yeah. year anniversary of Elf. Yeah. That's cr it's crazy. I mean, I remember running around in New York in a in that outfit, <laughs> literally thinking this is the end. This is the end of this is the end of my career. Really? Yeah, and uh, in pointy shoes and in tights. What does that feel and, like when you're having that conversation with yourself? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I just knew it was a big roll of the dice. I, I really, I loved this concept of a, of a human raised at the North Pole who thinks he's an elf yeah. and finds out he isn't. But, you know, I had just come off of old school, this R-rated, you know, crazy man's comedy, and now I'm doing this family Christmas movie. <laughs> and I, I, I knew it was either gonna really work or really fail. What do you make of the Rob Ford scenario? So you have this funny moment with him and Elvis and it blows up. Right. <laughs> what do you think when you're watching the tapes back going, oh God? Well, you know, Ron's got a mind of his own. So, uh, Ron Burgundy yeah. and his support of Rob. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, I just think it's, it's really fascinating that this, this cultured city, Toronto, has Chris Farley as its mayor. <laughs> We hope, we hope, without the tragic ending. When you're doing, when you're, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, when you're yeah, doing yeah. bits, and you know that yeah. I watch the late night comedy guys do this with all the states. When you're dealing with a guy and you're not sure what his real state is, how do you approach that kind of material? Um, you know, you usually just, unfortunately, you usually just dive in, and you probably don't think about those ramifications. Because uh, I, I, I mean, I think the the one thing you have to be completely 
in comedy is fearless. And, uh, and once you kind of make a decision to, to make whatever choice you're going to make, you can't look back. Uh, in, in Ron's book, he talks about Canada, which yes. is awesome. And in, yeah. in, in, the, in the great scene at the end, especially one of the greatest Canadians of all time, is, plays a role in the Canada thing. Yes, in, in, in the movie. In the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are people leaking who's going to be those cameos? Or is that all quiet? Everyone's, uh, uh, everyone's being pretty good yeah. about keeping it a secret. We won't uh, say it. It's got a very crying game moment. I'll just say that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, um, I wish. Shoot. We should have put that in. Anchorman yeah. 3. Yeah. The crying game. So is there something else in your past that you're looking at thinking this one won't go away and I think there's got to be a sequel? Uh, not, not currently. Uh, I, you know, I think this is an experiment for us and we'll see how it's received and uh, um, hopefully we didn't ruin the legacy of the first one and, uh, and that this one is, you know, a satisfying uh, continuation of the story. I think it is. It's a really good scene, man. Thank yeah, you for your time. Yeah, you too. Oh, okay.